live. What's going on? Welcome to You, Me, and YTV. Little funny story. We started this broadcast off on another page, but now we're on this page, and it's excellent. And it's my birthday today. Yay! Isn't that good, Nesbitt? <laughs> yeah, it's great news, Ryan. It's a great day. You're having a nice time. Yes, I am having a nice time. Hoping the mic levels are all nice and good. But on the line, it's not just my birthday. Well, I thought it was someone's birthday until uh, recent events have suggested otherwise. But um, uh, another person's birthday, let's say spiritually, is Susan Roman, the voice of Sailor Jupiter, and she's on the line right oh now. Oh my goodness, wonderful. How's it going, oh. Sailor Jupiter? Hi, Ryan. Happy birthday to you. Why, thank you very much. We had, oh. a, li- we had a full start before on, a, on, a, on my personal page, but it's cool because we got to tell a whole bunch of other people that this is happening, and I got to do my intro twice, and the second intro sounded real crisp. Um, oh, it always sounds better the second time, <laughs> right? <laughs> Everything in life is like that. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so we are having a blast right now. It's a live broadcast. We can't be around people, but we can connect to people on the internet. And it is just lovely to be able to connect with you again, Susan. Uh, we, met, we met at the Fan Expo a few years ago. I think we really hit it off. Um, I think you hit it off terrifically. Yeah. I thought you were fantastic. I really did. And I still do. Oh, and, thank and you so much. Look at, look at you. You're still around. You know, it, I've talked to quite a few people who had their own shows and they've kind of, you know, disappeared along the way. And I was so happy to get your message today, your happy birthday message yeah. uh, on Messenger. And, and I look and I said, oh, I'm so glad that he's still, you mentioned that you're still doing your show. And in fact, that's, I think, why I'm actually talking with you right now, because yeah. you, you reached out. And uh, I'm so glad to see that you're still doing a really excellent job. And you must be as happy as can be, because you're doing what you love, right? Absolutely. It's uh, it's just been an absolute dream to be able to do this um, and talk to people, connect with people. Um, we uh, definitely we want to get into a few things. We had a little bit of a late start today, but... Uh, I have a feeling some fans want some uh, questions for you, but Nesbit yes. here, my uh, sidekick partner in crime. Nesbit, do you have a question for Sailor Jupiter? As I look for the, uh, as I look at what the fans are saying. Well, I've got a question for Sailor Jupiter. I would love to know. First of all, thank you so much for being here. Apparently, it's everyone's birthday now. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Nesbitt. Oh. I'd love to meet you one day. Well, that would be most wonderful indeed. My question to you is, what kind of a thing, uh, what sort of things inspire you when you're performing? What kind of things uh, inspire me as an actress or as Sailor Jupiter? Oh, no. Wait, that sounds like really simple ass. <laughs> when you're performing, oh, when you're performing, <laughs> what, what inspires you? What inspires me is real life. And that's, I think, you know, as an actor, you sometimes you get a little bit, uh, some you you feel a little empty, right? You just okay. uh, you look inside and you go, oh, gosh, it's going to be really hard to pull something out today. And then all of a sudden, something from real life, maybe, you know, you'll run into a friend or you'll just see a stranger uh, on a street corner interacting like a little kid interacting with his mom and you can see the love that they share and all of a sudden you're connected back to the mainstream of life and then that's what you bring to your work because we're all we have to be plugged in you have to be plugged into this thing called humanity and it's so interesting what's going on now with all of us being separate and separated, we've had to find other ways to be together. And maybe it's more psychically together. Does that make any sense? More in a Absolutely. kind of, a, kind of a, a universal wave of something that's telling us we are all in this boat together. And that's the only way we can survive is to remember that. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Could not I could not agree more. Um, Susan, uh, I'm sure many, you've been a role model to many young, uh, women and men, of course. Um, what is some of the most touch, uh, considering conventions aren't really happening right now. What are some of like your most, uh, memorable touching moments you've had with fans that you would, you know, that, you know, you think of and it makes you smile and you're like, oh man, I, I you know, I, I connected with this person. 
Oh, Ryan, that is, uh, do you have an hour? <laughs> uh, it's, it, there are so many positive, happy memories for me, uh, you know, from meeting fans at, uh, at Comic Cons and Anime Cons. And some are um, touched with a, a kind of a, um, a sadness because um, I was able to, thanks to them, not thanks to me, I was able to, even on a really short amount of time, get to know the struggles that some people experienced when they were growing up. Because a lot of the people who watch Sailor Moon were in that really formative, you know, preteen, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, into that area, you know, when if, if, if you're not fitting in with, um, you know, with the kids at school or, or whatever, your life can be, uh, can be challenging and it can be very lonely. And then to find that there's a representative of uh, somebody who's maybe a little bit outside of the mainstream, like Sailor Jupiter was outside the mainstream in her class because she was tall, because she had um, anger management issues, <laughs> otherwise known as a bad jipper, and she was feisty and she was all these things. And so she was a little bit outside of the main the main group, let's say. And so a lot of people were able to relate to that. And then when I go to Comic-Cons, they relate that back to me. And it's as if I'm seeing them through the eyes of a child. I, I, I can see them in their childhood years. I could see it. And there are very often a lot of tears and uh, a lot of emotion. And I think to myself, what did I do to deserve such a gift as this? To be able to connect on that level with real, true emotion that is on, in one hand very sad, but on the other hand, it's past now, it's gone, right? And they can talk about it. And um, I think the thing that, that gets to me the most is when I'll be chatting with somebody because in you know, Comic Cons, I always chat and talk and hold hands. I, I don't know. Oh, my. One second. Oh, goodness me. What just happened? Oh, no. Where did she oh, no. go? Susan. Susan. Susan Roman, please. Susan, what happened? I need oh, no, Susan never... Roman back. I, that I, I can't that, take that. That doesn't this. happen usually. Susan, can you hear us? Oh, no. Oh, my God. I'm going to throw up all over the place. Where is Susan Roman? Oh, crap. Oh, oh this it. is what you call a technical difficulty. This will give you nightmares for the rest of your your life and my life. Susan, can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay, oh, okay, we're back. Yes. We're my back. Goodness we're back. gracious. Okay, so what happened? Oh, okay. what, what happened, ladies and gentlemen, is that uh, usually if I push a button with our other computer and stuff like that, we are able to show some clips of Sailor. Uh, Sailor um, uh, uh, blah, 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 Jupiter doing her thing. Jupiter. But oh, no, I know it's Jupiter. I was just. You're just, panicking all over panicking. yourself. It's my birthday, though. I'm allowed to screw up, right? Well, yes, no. You, you cannot <laughs> take Susan Roman away from me. No, I'm, excuse no but me, you're, excuse on me. Just, you're on just such a beautiful moment. And I just realized when I push this button, it completely takes away the ability to hear and all that stuff. So we're back now. And we're live and we're embarrassed and it's it's all good. Susan, you were just you were just you were just telling us how uh, you are are definitely a hero to these people. And at conventions, you're able to, you know, meet the fans that have have been there, uh, have been watching you and emulating you and sometimes they take a little bit of that character they bring it in their own personality i know my friend right. i know my friend jess k absolutely loves sailor jupiter oh yes jess k loves sailor jupiter yeah Aww, she's i love to hear that yeah she's she's rocked a uh, sailor jupiter costume on halloween and her punk band it's uh it's really great oh. Uh, my friend Jared is watching, and I think he just got Facebook pretty much because it's my birthday today. Oh, and, Jared. And, and to hear a bit of Sailor Jupiter. So, Sailor Jupiter, would you mind giving a, a, a shout-out to Jared? I think I think as a Facebook uh, firstie, he would really like that. And his name is Jared? Yeah. Hey, Jared, I love that name. That's a great name. Jared. Jared. <laughs> 
wow, hey, listen, can I bake you a cake? You know, that's the one part that's not true, Jared. I'm not really a good cook, but I play one on television, right? That's that old joke. Oh, I guess that's a very old one. Uh, but you know what? I'm so glad that we got the chance to say, or at least I got the chance to say hi to you. And I know that somewhere, somehow you're saying hi to me. I can hear it, Jared. I really, really can hear it. Jupiter, thunder, crash. And I think the question on everybody's mind is, does he remind you of your old boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, Ryan, I already told you that you kind of remind me of my old boyfriend. <laughs> but you know what? I have had more than one boyfriend, Ryan. So <laughs> Jared, Jared reminds me of my 18th boyfriend. <laughs> 18th boyfriend. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. go, girl. You Yoops go, girl. Been busy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for calling in, Susan. We don't want to take up all your time, but I would love, I would love personally to have you back on the show for like one of those one-on-one -on -one sessions where I can talk to you about your career because at comic at the at the fan expo where I met you I got to ask you like you know some uh on the surface questions but you've been a voice actress you like for you've had a career I want to know how you got into voice acting I want to know how you um how you got the audition what what was your inspirations all that and we don't have time for that today but I think like all my other guests you deserve the spotlight and I want to I want to call you back I want to interview you proper would, oh, would you like would you like that Oh that sounds great Ryan I would love to do it for you anything Oh amazing thank you so much for calling in Susan you my are pleasure. you are the best Thank you oh. so so much Susan you made my day <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Um, and and again, happy birthday. And Thank make you. sure that you celebrate the beautiful event of you being you, right? You have to celebrate too, Ryan. It's not just the people around you, okay? All right. Thank you All so right. much, Susan. Take care. Bye. 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 Wasn't that great, ladies and gentlemen? I don't even know what to say. What a delightful, delightful, wonderful lady. You have to have her back on again. Please, please. Absolutely. And next time we'll like do it long form and stuff like that. Like um, we want to, you know, sometimes I love adding those clips. I love adding the stuff. But maybe even next time we'll set it up where uh, we have a different setup. We can get her on the video here. And maybe the fans can actually ask her questions and interact with her and stuff like that. I'm sure they would love that. Do you think they would love that, Nisbet? I, I think that would be wonderful. Her voice was so beautiful. It was like listening to the beautiful sound. If maple syrup had a sound on a on a on a porch at sunset, it would be her beautiful voice. Absolutely. All right, everybody. So um, the show's not over yet. We have another caller. We we. Oh, okay. Um. So we have a we have a we have a beautiful uh, sorry I'm getting messages it's conflicting information it's all good thank you so much for Susan Roman for uh, calling in that was amazing um, we are going to uh, contact our next guest who is a uh, who is a, a y, one of the YTV uh, icons I would say I love I love this show so much I love this show um, student bodies oh and one my, of my god student bodies you just you had me. and one of my favorite characters in student crane because i love i love <laughs> let's just get a close-up of nesbitt there i love it when um victor crane uh he's like he started out as not their friend and then turns around and really wants to be their friend you kind of see that this character went through some stuff you know he uh he, all that anger and all that uh you know the distance and the snootiness it all comes from a place of pain so um, I just find I just found him absolutely fascinating, and the way this actor Mick Perlis played him was absolutely fantastic. The the man's genius. I've never seen anyone so convincing, and by all accounts, he's the kindest man you'd ever meet. But yeah. he was such a rich, snooty character, real snooty. <laughs> Say snooty again. I got your close up now on it. It's super funny when I do the close up. Snooty, <laughs> kind, kind, kind fellow in real life, but he does a good job. He earns that paycheck because he was real snooty on the television. All right, everybody. So we're gonna you're gonna experience something that we haven't done before. You're gonna experience a live attempt of call, and we're gonna see if it works. 
because we're just doing our best, everybody. And uh, the funny thing is about uh, it being my birthday today is that a whole bunch of people are usually messaging me at once, and some some of them are giving instructions, and that's what throws me off when uh, when we're doing a live show. But I'm having such a good time. Oh, I'm having a good time, too. I was already having a good day, to be quite honest. I had a little bit of cinnamon in my porridge this morning, but I mean, this is even better. I mean, honestly, when you think about it, you're like, this is the first birthday ever where I'm not really allowed to see anyone. And uh, sometimes you make these connections where you, you meet some friends, you haven't seen them for years. And um, and, and people, when you, you meet like Susan Roman, who are just like so the equivalent of what a Canadian is supposed to be. You know what I mean? Like, I just met you. Hello. Here, let, let's be friendly to each other. And then three or four years later, connecting again live on the internet for everybody else. And it's, and it's just, I'm in a good mood today because I thought I was going to be in a bad mood. All day yesterday, I thought to myself, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a little lonely. Well, I got you, Nesbitt. And, uh, oh, yes, you've got me, and I'm really happy to be here, Ryan. Happy birthday to you. Nesbitt, you, I, I can't tell you what it means to me that we got to hang out the last few weeks and you're co-hosting the show. Uh, you're just uh, an absolute delight, Nesbitt, and I love your taste in clothes. Why, thank you. I apologize if my, my personal assistant was seen on camera just there. Sometimes she gives me a little shoulder rub to, to calm me down when I'm real excited with all this good news happening on the shoulder day. Yes. Oh, apparently, uh, unfortunately, um, some people who are uh, some people are asking questions to Susan Roman. It's a little too late, but we will definitely get them next time. But you got to leave them wanting more, and Lord knows people want more. She's fantastic. But uh, we, I definitely want to uh, address something that someone named Ryan Lint. Cool name. Cool first night. Oh, God, that's so much better than Ryan Stick. Oh, hello, Jenny Watson. I see me some Jenny Watson. Hi, beautiful girl. Ryan Lint is saying, hey, Ryan, Ryan here. I want to let you know that I'm so, uh, so what, 25, the one who posts the radioactive episodes on YouTube. My sweet jumping Mary and Joseph. Hello. You know what's really, uh, inter- you know what's really interesting about that, uh, Ryan, there is that so... Uh, Nesbitt here happens to be a very big fan of the radioactive episode that uh, ha- features uh, meat versus potatoes. Yeah, you really, you really appreciated them uploading that episode, right? I, I do very much so. I could not find it anywhere. So thanks to Ryan Lint over at So What Twenty One, I was able to watch that 25. episode. Twenty-five. Excuse me. Pardon me. So What Twenty-Five. I was able to enjoy over and over. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna attempt to uh, call Mr. Mick. Perlis. Oh my goodness, what a nice day this is. Oh my goodness. We need more people on our crew. You know, I think when uh, I think when this whole pandemic's over, we need someone who will man the cameras and someone who will do the sound and then I could just get all loose and perform with you, you know? Well, you gotta be ready to pay people for that kind of stuff. And I, I would like a personal assistant to just go and get me some nice soup. But <laughs> mind you, I'd like to get it myself because I make really good soup. I'd give the assistant some soup. <laughs> Be like, here, have some of this soup. It's delicious. All Split right. pea and celery. <laughs> I like celery. Keep at it, Nesbitt. I got to call him. Okay. Well, now... My favorite soup recipe involves a orange split pea soup, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of olive oil, and, uh, you know, some celery. You can keep it simple. You can add a little curry if you want. Maybe some coconut milk. It's quite delicious. All right. We're oh doing goodness. the ringing. Victor Crane's going to be on the phone any second now, Mr. McPurlis. He's probably expecting us on Skype, but, uh, you know, we've had one of those days. We'll try to get him on Skype. That'd be great. McPurlis. Hello. How's Hello. it going? going happy birthday ryan thank you so much my friend i'm going to turn down this music so we can hear you yes better. please please i All can right. hear you loud and clear and hello to nesbitt oh hello hello mick it's an honor <laughs> hello <laughs> no the honor is all mine awesome just give me a sec to adjust these levels we're putting us down and you up oh uh, i can speak i can move a little bit closer to my microphone if oh that, that would be like. lovely that would be um, lovely all right we're good awesome okay. See, that's what happens, everybody. You're, uh, that's what happens, everybody, in, uh, in live internet land. When you're a crew of two, you got to make do. Oh, that was awesome, and I wasn't even trying. Okay. Somebody write that down. Yep, yep, someone write that down. Mick, how the heck are you? I'm doing well. This is the uh, best quarantine I've ever had. <laughs> I, some would say it's the only quarantine you've ever had, luckily. Some would say, yes. No, we're, uh, I'm, I'm with my family. Um, and uh, we are making the most of it. So um, we are all happy and healthy. And 
uh, still enjoying each other's company. So that's good. Well, that's good. I mean, how many people could say that? Um, I hope a lot because there's not a lot of choice right now. Exactly. So, um, Mick, it's been it's been a minute since I've been able to see you. Well, now you've seen something of him. Well, I saw I saw you in an amazing birthday video. Yeah, you saw some footage. Like right right before we started this, uh, we were running behind because it took a few minutes to get over what I just saw because it was just so breathtaking. Um, oh, that's wonderful! I'm so glad. I'd love to see that. Oh, I'm, you you will it, it. It's right. It's right. It's on Facebook on my page. Okay, I'll on my check reg- it out. on my regular timeline, you could check it out. It's um. But for everyone who hasn't seen this, it uh, Melissa, uh, my darling Melissa, uh, assembled a wacky cast of characters and kind of make a made a fake intro uh, song to uh, well a fake intro video and it had all my friends and family, but it had it had you and Jessica Goldapple and Jamie, it <laughs> and Ross. It was just to see all of you together. I, it dawned on me. I'm like, I haven't seen all these people together. That's not student body related. Um, now we we, we mu- threw in some radioactive too, so it was like some, this really nice mix. So yeah, to see radioactive and to see student bodies, and I was just thinking as my show, I'm like, it took me years to assemble all these people in the same segment. But well, when Melissa reaches out, uh, we, we say yes. Oh my That's goodness, simple. what a tender, kind thing to say. So so the last time I saw you uh, in person was at the Fan Expo when uh, Student Bodies did that legendary reunion. That, that was uh, incredible. Had all your fans uh, ha- happy as can be. Um, do you look back on those day uh, on that day and smile as much as I do? Oh, absolutely. That was that was one of the absolute highlights of uh, of my experience with that show, and and one of the highlights of my life, I would say. And you were fantastic. We could not have had a better host um, for for that event. And and thank you so much for everything that you did. It was great. Oh man, I, it's. I, I think you guys need to do more reunions because it's been a few years and there's other parts in Canada that definitely like maybe when this crisis calms down, I think I think people want to want to see uh, your beautiful faces all at the same time, because I can say from personal experience yeah, and mine as well, it is it is there is just something when you see all you guys together, there's an energy in the room. You could actually tell that you're all actual friends. And that is that is something very not common when it comes to a large ensemble of cast of characters. Well, I think everybody goes through that those times in their lives where they they kind of go through like real formative experiences, whether it be like going through high school or summer camp or I don't know whatever. There's always that thing where you go through something, and it's not it doesn't have to be a negative thing. You go just through something that's really formative in your life with a group of people, and those people become your friends forever and um and student bodies for so many of us was that kind of an experience Uh, a lot of us were young actors we hadn't um you know done a big show like that and uh, a lot of us were not from montreal we shot at montreal but we had come from toronto so uh, we spent so much time together Uh, it really was uh, an important time in in a lot of our lives and yeah those friendships have absolutely endured so it's it, everything you saw was absolutely true. Oh wow! And um, I suppose you, you and the boys haven't had time to do any of your annual road trips. But uh, for those of you who do follow that, make sure you follow Student Bodies Twenty, everybody on Facebook, because uh, that is uh, web. That is specifically if you want to get a hold of uh, Student Bodies people, especially Mick. That is the source to go to because uh, that 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 Facebook page helped get that reunion together especially with the original video we cut together that's like a fake reunion teaser and uh it just touched so many people it got a million views in about what two days or something a day oh it was incredible people lost their minds for that people went a little bit crazy yeah i Mm -hmm. think it's just you know we had kind of you know 20 years had gone by and uh all of a sudden um you know there was a real and you know you got you guys were part of it and part of sort of pushing it but there was a real nostalgia for for uh, that time and for the shows of the 90s and, and particularly for the shows that were on that that block on YTV, which yeah. just meant so much to so many people. And what was amazing is that we had, I don't know, we must have had six, 800. I don't know how many people had come out, but uh, we filled a huge room and there were still people waiting outside the door to get in and people brought their kids and it, it was just incredible. It lo- really looked like people were screaming their heads off. I'd never seen anything like that. It was very, very nice. 
It was great. We I, I don't think anybody enjoyed it more than the cast, Frank. Well, maybe <laughs> Ryan. Ryan might be the one person who enjoyed it more than the cast, but the rest of us, we, we definitely had a blast. Yeah, it. Um, I, th I think everybody and why they connect with that po time of their lives is because um not uh well you better uh sit you better you know careful because i'm about to drop a name but uh i was interviewing uh john Car uh, john carlo and ryan wilner from uh, radioactive along with melissa and uh we're putting their reunion episode together and they said i said the same thing to them i'm like your show the reason why it mattered so much to people is they watched that show before they went to high school and it offered kind of like um well to some it offered kind of like this fantasized version of high school and student bodies changed from that to, you know, high school is silly and high school is fun. And it aged with your audience that someone who was 14 or 15 would still watch that show because all of a sudden you started tackling uh, more serious subject matter. There was really something for everybody. The show was was very malleable in that sense. It really changed. I mean, if you recall the episodes in first season of Student Bodies, it, it skewed much younger. We had like silly episodes like Goop where we had, you know, like this, you know, science experiment gone wrong. And we had, <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of silly things. And then if you look at that compared to what we did on the third season where, you know, we had a uh, an episode called Victor Gets Drunk where my character <gasps> got drunk one night at a party and couldn't remember anything that happened that night and had to retrace the steps. Then it was basically like the hangover, but before the hangover. Oh my. And or, or we had episodes where, you know, Emily had a gay friend come and visit the school. And like at the time, those were not the types of things that you were really seeing on um, on a channel like YTV and certainly not in comedies. Like you might see some things like that in some teen dramas like Degrassi. But to do it in a sitcom format was was very different. And we you're right. We ended up having two very distinct audiences. We had that sort of after school audience of, of kids who came home from from middle school or, or from junior high school and, and they were watching the show. And then we had a whole other audience of university kids who were watching us at two in the morning. And uh, and we knew they were out there because then we would go see them at bars. And I remember one night uh, out in Montreal on like a Friday night, I was out at a club and somebody tried to pick a fight with me because she didn't appreciate the way I was treating the student bodies gang. At, uh, <laughs> at school that is ridiculous <laughs> nothing like having to tell a drunk 22 year old woman that it's not it's not real well you know the, the victor gets <laughs> like drunk it's not real someone. life it's high school i mean i'm no that's not what i said that's what I they say in the show yes <laughs> it's a show but you don't know right away what Victor did and to watch Flash's reaction and their interplay and how he slowly finds out, what did I do? It was almost kind of haunting to see because then you imagine everything. and Yeah, that episode was really happy. I mean, and we t that was the first time we'd ever talked about Flash's, you know, mother being an alcoholic or anything <laughs> like that. It was just, it, 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 it was really... It was really great uh, as an actor on that show to be able to um, sort of go that far with the drama, but also have so much fun with the ridiculous comedy that we we did too. It was just, it was like a, it was a dream role, and it, it was it was a great show for all of us. But for for Victor in particular, or for me in particular, it was really a great role because I got to have so much fun being the kind of arch villain. But then mm -hmm. I got to do shows like that where I really had like some emotional acting to do. I thought it was genius because it's so easy to be one dimensional with a role like that. And that's not what you did at all. You had so many layers and there was some, there was a bit of darkness and there was a bit of, there was always humor, but there was more to, to, to Vic than what people saw originally. Well, I had to kind of, I remember after the first season, having a meeting with the, the writers and the producers, and they really didn't know where to go with Victor because we'd kind of played out that, that, sort of bad guy villain role, that two-dimensional side of just trying to get back at the student bodies gang just for the sake of getting rid of them. And so we were all looking for a a new layer to him. And and for me, and you know, when you're an actor, you, you're never, especially if you're playing a villain, you always try to be the hero of your own story. You always feel like you're doing what you believe is the right thing. And for Victor, I always felt like he just really wanted to be included. And he he was he hated them because they kept excluding him from everything. They never let him in. They never wanted him to be a part of student bodies. They always pushed him on the outside. So he kind of got his revenge on them for that. 
But then mm. once we talked about that, then it changed his whole reason for being. And then we got into Victor kind of being that outsider who wants to get along and get in with the gang, but just can't because he has so many personality issues. Oh, <laughs> it was just decadently played. Every scene was just so rich when Victor was in it. Now, not a lot of people know this, but... Um... Uh, there was not a crossover, but sometimes a character crossover. Like you would see uh, the cast of other shows kind of uh, appear on student bodies before those other shows existed. Such as I know Lucinda Davies was on a, an episode or two of student bodies. But uh, Morgan from Radioactive came on and she played Victor's uh, girlfriend. He didn't have many girlfriends on the show, but this was the first one. Oh, I lost you. Chris. OK, you hear me now? Yes, he definitely did not have very many. I hear you now. Yeah, he okay. did not have very many girlfriends on the show. Um, yeah. He definitely had one. And uh, that was a very memorable episode. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, there. I think Victor, Victor always, he can't kind of came close uh, in the third season. Um, and he and Flash always had sort of a weird vibe between them. But it was it was never really... A romantic thing although it kind of wanted to be but it wasn't really and yeah. so it, there was always a little bit of that but the real uh you know romantic friction was really between um flash and and chris i think yeah but the but yeah we morgan was uh unfortunately she was a bit of a money hungry character in that episode so <laughs> yeah she was up to some I, mischief she was up to some mischief, yeah. Uh, that's one. Well, that episode happened rather early in the series because that's, uh, I think, that's kind of like when the guys and girls started to uh, see you more as a friend because they they felt, especially especially Jessica Goldapple, aka Flash, they they knew something was up with her, and it gave them a reason to kind of like you know show they cared about you by uh, addressing that something was up with her. So you know. Perhaps, perhaps that was when uh, the character started to change and the people started to see you a little differently. It's yeah, I think so. I think it was always kind of there. I think Victor tried to bury it pretty deeply under the surface, but Flash was always, you know, if 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 Flash could like him, then there was something to that character that could be likable. And I think that's why Flash was so important because, in a way, she was the bridge between Victor and between the rest of the game because they liked Flash. Flash was a you know, wasn't as arch. She was certainly mischievous and she certainly kind of like, you know, marched to the beat of her own drum. But, you know, she, Victor was more of like the arch villain. Um, but, you know, if, if if Flash could be somebody who could be friends with both sides, then there was a way to bring that group together. And, and that's what ended up happening in season two. Awesome. I, I love that New Year's episode where where you were in the, you had to stop and pick up some clothes and then the phone rang and and it was it was Chris and he said it, well, where's Mags and you said oh she's just grabbing some clothes you know to kind of push his buttons that was fantastic. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh man. So Mick, I know you got to go right now and we're gonna let you go. But uh, before we go, I definitely I cannot in good conscience uh, end this chat without uh, both me and you giving a special shout out to super fan Amanda who uh, made uh, yes who whose presence at the reunion was well remembered with the gift she displayed and uh, with with the gift she gave you guys these beautiful books full of pictures and it's uh, well, just hi Amanda on my if end. Amanda's watching right now or Amanda's listening right now um, hi Amanda uh, we miss you Amanda's our, our biggest fan and uh, and and she certainly is a very generous person who has spent a lot of time um, making things and, and just showing us how much she appreciated the show. And we appreciate um, how much time she's put into it. And we, and we certainly appreciate her fandom. So uh, hi, Amanda, and uh, hope all is well with you and, and you're doing well at this crazy time. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Mick. Oh, my pleasure. Happy birthday, Ryan. Uh, thanks, bud. Um, Say hi to Melissa for me and uh, Nesbitt. See you soon, I guess. Oh, it's been an honor. Thank you so much for being here. My <laughs> pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mick. Have a great day. Bye -bye. You too. Bye, pal. All right. Well, that was unreal. I can't believe that just happened. That man is so... Now I'm thinking of all those scenes he was in. They were just delicious scenes. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, it's a shame that our setup, uh, <laughs> we're using a different computer today, and uh, the old setup that we were about going to do, we could have showed some student body clips and some uh, Sailor Mars clips as uh, Susan and Mick were talking, but yeah, in the spirit of actual YTV, it was the Wild West back then. They just, 
They pushed record, hope for the best. Shows like the hit list, um, they were recording in a truck, and I don't think they cut very often. They just had two cameras and a lot of speed talking. Speaking of, happy birthday to Tarzan Dan. Happy birthday, Tarzan Dan. Ha- happy birthday, Tarzan Dan. His birthday was just a few days ago, and uh, he turned 21 years old. Yes. Yeah, 21. Right, Nesbitt? Oh, for sure. What, what, whatever he says, that's what it is. So how about we give... Uh, Mick's birthday, Mick's birthday, he's an Aries as well, just like me. His birthday was in March, so oh. we could we could, we could could add him into this. It's, I believe it's March 20-something. Uh, but Tarzan Dan was just a few days ago, so how about you and me, Nesbe? We sing happy birthday to Tarzan Dan, but because he's chums with the Backstreet Boys and helped get them uh, noticed for the first time in North America and got them played on uh, English uh, television and radio... We we should sing to Tarzan Dan happy birthday like we were the Backstreet Boys. You know, like real back, real boy bandits. So, Nesbitt, I really need you to ham it up, okay? That sounds like a jolly good time. Did you challenge accepted? Okay, okay. Ha- Wait, I'll, I'll stop the music. Okay. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. I'll be the bass. Happy, happy birthday, birthday. To you, happy birthday, dear Tarzan Dan. And Mick from a month ago. Happy birthday to you. That was beautiful, Nesbitt. Oh, why, thank you. <laughs> and not and not even a sense, and not even a bit over the top. Now, before we go, let's kick those beats again. And uh, <laughs> let's see if the fans have anything to say. And if not, we're going to go into that good night. Nope, I think we're good. I think we are good. Thanks, everybody, for writing in and being part of my birthday. My goodness, this is lovely. I had such a good time today. Sorry for all the mess ups, but hey, we didn't swear once. We're well, improving. No, no, there's no foul language necessary. Well, why don't you ruin it right now, Nesbit? I'm not going to say something foul. There's children watching this. Is there? What kind of news is that? I don't know if there is news or not, but you know what? It just makes me happy about the future. The day is just beginning. We are going to have uh, more fun on our end. We're just gonna we're just gonna be hanging out, watching some cool cartoons. Make sure you check out full seasons of all your favorite shows, including Street Sharks and uh, Samurai Pizza Cats and a bunch of other shows, all on YouTube. Thanks to uh, like uploaders like Soa Twenty Five, you could go check out their you could check out their radioactive uploads. And uh, I know for a fact that Morgan from Radioactive, who is conveniently uh, out of reach of the room right now, uh, really appreciates you uploading all those episodes and keeping the memories alive because that's that's what the cast watches too. Oh you... yes, um, I met the actress uh, Melissa Galliano, and uh, she doesn't know how to do that technology. So thank you so much. Yes. So uh, thanks to everybody, including Retro Ontario. Um, there's so many YouTubers out there that are keeping the YTV memories alive. Thank you for the bottom of my heart, because all the clips you see that I use in the episodes, I, oh. su- I borrow from them in order to tell a better story. Look at the people in the... Co- Eric Lightborn's there, and look, Jared uh, d- took you up on your swearing, and your mother's in here. Well, look at all these nice people. What's all this news? <laughs> Keep talking about the news, Ness, but you got a close-up on you. Oh, that's great. Well, uh, I was talking earlier about some cinnamon that I had in my porridge this morning, and I think everybody should have some cinnamon. It's good for the soul, and it's good for the taste buds. I put them in my smoothies, and I'm rambling on about cinnamon, and I'm kind of confused right now because, uh, well, I want to eat some birthday cake. (laughs) It's so great. It's so great, Nesbitt, just seeing you talk about things as a puppet. Um, <laughs> all right, everybody, I think that's I think that's a good time to wrap up. You know what I mean? Like, let's not wear out our welcome and stuff like that. We had two uh, con- we had two calls. It was a good day. I'm happy that you're all here. I'm happy you shared this with me. This is the most weirdest birthday I've ever had because I'm an extrovert. I'm a social butterfly. I love people, and this is the only way I can really be around people. And without having to call hundreds of people at once. So um, from the bottom of my heart, everybody who watches You, Me, and YTV on Facebook and YouTube, thank you. Every comment, every like, 
every share. That is the paycheck because we do we only get paid in praise, and all the praise we get, we appreciate. Isn't that right, Nesbitt? That's absolutely right. And happy birthday to you, and, and happy birthday to Conan O'Brien, who's got the same birthday today, uh, April 18th. Also, Rick Moranis. Television? From television? Yes, from television. Oh, my sweet goodness. And Mr. James Woods. Oh, that's nice, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a whole bunch of people. Eli Roth. Oh, he's a scary man. He's nice, though. And David Tennant. I know someone who met him at the airport. He was real friendly. And David and, and David Tennant of Doctor Who, all born on April 18th. Excellent. You know, back to Eli Roth, he did an ad for that organization that PETA uh, to say uh, about animals in entertainment. That's wrong, and you use fake ones, and he posed with a big old fake snake, and that's really nice of him to do that, I reckon. For those of you who did not see the show today, just to let you know that we had two, uh, for those of you just joining us, we had two call-in guests. One of them was Susan, Susan Roman, the voice of Sailor Jupiter. Unbelievable. Amazing person. And we also had Mick Perlis, who played Victor on Student Bodies, both call-in. We shared some memories. My gosh, what's happening here? That's amazing. It, it's it's great. You know what? I think I think this is the future of the show. I love it when people call in because then the episode is out there and people just get to watch it immediately. Instant satisfaction. Not this months of editing and, and preparation and all this other stuff. This is the future of you, me, and y to We'll still edit some special episodes, but every week we're going to do this, and we're going to try to get in some calls. It's going to be great. You like that, Nesbitt? I- I'm in. Sign me up under Yes, Please. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everyone, for watching You, Me, and y TV. Make sure you follow us on YouTube and Facebook. And I guess we got to get back on that Instagram and we got to do those tweets and we got to get the word out there. So help us get the word out there. You, me, and YTV. Awesome. If we get those <laughs> tweets out, it sounds like you're talking about birds. Like, I think, oh, I got to go get some bird seed now. But, oh, it's it's Twitter. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, Nesbitt. It wouldn't be an episode about one of those jokes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Have yourselves a good night. Be safe, be happy, and be nostalgic. Bye. Bye.